This is typically done so that you can have access to the unit on a local network for computer viewing or remote access when you're away from the location to be viewed on either a computer, smartphone, or tablet. Some of the information you'll need in order to achieve this will be the IP address of the device, your router, username, and password, and the IP address of your router. To find out what your IP address is for your recording unit, you will need to be in front of the unit. With the mouse, you'll want to right click on your live monitor view, select menu. If you have a password prompt, you will need to enter your password now. The default password for these units is typically 1111. Once in the menu, you will need to go to maintenance and then network. Here you will see what your current IP address is for the unit. Once done, you can hit back, then exit, and this will return you to your live view for your cameras. If you need to make changes to your IP address, you will need to enter into the menu by using your mouse, right-clicking on your live view, selecting menu, enter a password if necessary, go to configuration, then network, and then general. Under general, you will see a box labeled DHCP. If this is checked, depending on your network settings, you may want to uncheck that or leave it checked. For this instance, we will want it to be unchecked. To change the IP address, you'll want to select your IP address, click on it. You will then get a keyboard prompt to change the IPv4 IP address. Input the IP address that is necessary to be communicated on your network and then hit enter. You will need to do the same for the subnet mask and gateway should they need to be changed to match your network settings. Once you have your settings input, click apply. If the settings are successful, the apply button will be grayed out. Once this is done, you can hit back, then exit to return you to your live view screen. And then an easy way to get the IP address for access of your router is to open a command prompt. To do this, you'll want to go down to your start menu, type in the term CMD, and hit enter. Once you do this, you should get a black box with a DOS prompt in it. In this DOS prompt, what you're going to want to type out is the term IPconfig. By doing this, you will be given information of the IP address of the computer that you're currently on, containing as well as the subnet and the gateway. The gateway is typically used as your router access IP address. Once you have this information, you will want to go ahead, exit out of this DOS window, open up Internet Explorer or the browser of your choice. Once you open up your browser, you want to go into the URL bar at the top. Here you're going to want to type in that gateway that you got from the command prompt for your router. In this case, it is 192.168.1.1. Once you do this and hit enter, you will be prompted to input the username and password for your router. Input that information and hit enter. What you will see next is your status page for your router. Here we're using a Linksys router. You will want to next go to, in this particular router, Gaming and Applications. Once you go to this section, you will be taken to the first initial page, which is Single Port Forwarding. Here, you're going to input the ports that are necessary by the unit in order to access the system. In our case, we are going to enter the ports 80, 8000, and 1050. In the port forwarding section, you're going to want to input each port one by one. For the first port, we're going to label this one DVR. This name can be any name that you want to give it. This is just a self-identifier. As we go across, we enter the port 80 for each field. 
for the internal and the external ports. We then choose our communication standard, either TCP or UDP or both. If the option for both is listed, go ahead and choose both. You will then want to enter the IP address of your recording unit. In this case, the last portion here is the option to enable the rule. So we want to make sure that that is enabled. We then move to the next line and we'll repeat the same process. The only difference in this line will be that we'll be adding the second port. In this case, will be 8,000. And we repeat the same steps, adding 8,000 to the external, 8,000 to the internal port, choosing both for our communication, and adding the IP address for the unit. And then making sure that this rule is enabled. Once that is done, we will go ahead and repeat it one more time for our third port of 1050. Once we have all the information entered, you want to make sure and save your changes. So here in this router, this is located at the bottom. We'll click Save Changes. Once we do that, we get a confirmation page showing the changes have been saved successfully. Once we continue, we can verify the changes are there. Once your settings are changed, you can verify that everything is successfully applied by going to any number of open port testers. Some of the more popular tools are YouGetSignal.com and CanYouSeeMe.org. There on those websites, you can actually put in the IP address that you're testing, which would then be your external IP, along with the port that you're wanting to check if it's open. Once you have successfully gotten a confirmation that the ports are open, you will then want to check your connection through either a smartphone, tablet, or a computer on a different network.